Hi, everyone. I'm Charlene Shirk, and welcome to Digital Champions, where we speak to some of the most innovative thinkers in the digital space. And joining me today from Lubbock, Texas, is my co-host, Jonathan Silva. Jonathan, good to see you, sir. Hey, good to see you. Oh, great to see you. And from Albuquerque, New Mexico, David Wolf from Vita Studios. Hi, David. Thanks for taking the time to join us today on Digital Champions. Thanks so much for having me, Charlene and Jonathan. Good to be with you. All right. So you sound great. So what else do you do at Audavita Studios other than just sound really great? Oh, that's sweet. Thank you so much. So we are a, at our core, we're a podcast and audiobook production company. So on the podcasting side, we've got about 50 shows in production at current. Um, we handle the recording, the uh, editing, distribution of all of those shows on a weekly or biweekly basis, depending on the client's needs. And then we also have an audiobook division. So we uh, work with publishers and authors to get their books uh, in the audiobook format and for distribution on Audible, Amazon, iTunes, and there's about 52 other places they can sell their audiobooks. And that's the essence of what we do. We're a virtual company and uh, we're having a lot of fun. Well, and so David, there's a huge misconception in the world about what it takes to create a successful podcast, right? Or audiobook. And, and I know you also do um, live events and, and different live productions. And so th there's a ton of things that can go wrong. And I hope the producers don't get mad at me for bringing this up and jinxing anything. But um, th there's so many things that can go wrong, right? Especially when you're live. So what are you solving for your customers? What are you doing for them? So at the highest level, Jonathan, what we're doing is we're helping to deliver our uh, clients' voices to the world. So it happens in both of those ways, audiobooks and podcasts. And quite honestly, most of the work we do is not live. We do have a few podcasters that do a, a live stream, and we handle it like live TV, not unlike what you and I are doing together today. Uh, and then we repackage it for distribution in audio only or in video in the tail, if you like. So... Uh, but you're, you're pointing to what we do, and that is we strip away the technology, we strip away any of the issues, the problems, we systemize, uh, system, we have a systematic approach to the production process so that our clients can hang back and show up with their content, with their knowledge, with their expertise, and engage with the uh, interviews they're conducting or whatever it is they're producing with us. Well, and I don't, I, I want to know a little bit more about like your biggest pain point when it comes to digital advertising and the different platforms. So something that I think you, you undersold here in your response earlier is that you also create content to tease the episodes or to keep the audience engaged. So what's your pain point there as far as the different platforms and different content strategies? What does that look like for you? Oh, my goodness. So at, at our core, we're not really a marketing company, which makes us slightly different. However, it arguably audiobooks and podcasts are a form of marketing. So um, I'm trying to circle to your question. The pain point, of course, is the continuity of content streaming out every week. Uh, for an audiobook project, that's a once and done deal and it's a little bit different. But in both cases, we do often support our clients with an ongoing drip campaign of some kind, whether it's taking short clips from a podcast episode to promote the, that episode or a series of episodes, or in the case of an audiobook, an extreme example is where we took a snippet from 50 chapters and uh, released them over a year time, kind of a time release wow. on social media. And in that instance, it was LinkedIn. So we are finding more and more, and this is sort of a pain point for our own workflows at Audavita, that our clients are two things. One is there's the uh, emergence of video as a primary uh, art form around content, right, uh, with podcasting. So we're doing both now much more often. And... Um, and the other thing is just really supporting them to promote and drive audience and engagement. Those, those are the pain points for our client and arguably probably the pain points for our own business as, as we're marketing ourselves as well. So. <laughs> right. Hey, David, I have a question. Some podcasts are just straight up podcasts and then others, they're recording it in the studio. They're filming it. They're pushing it out as a video product as well. What, from your yeah. expertise, is there any increased success or exposure opportunity when you're doing it? as well as video or just straight up podcast? Well, I think the way I'd answer that is people seem to like video a lot, but one of the things about listener behavior is it's listening. So in both the case of audiobooks and podcasts, in, and since I've been in this business specifically over, let's call it a 10, 15 year period, of is about four years old as an entity itself. Uh, there's been a sh huge consumer and, you know, B2B even, a shift in human behavior to, I don't have time to sit and read, so I'm going to listen to an audiobook. In, on the podcast side of it, you know, it's very subjective and it also is driven largely w 
by budget because it costs more to shoot and edit video. Um, and so it, it largely depends on what the uh, objective of the client is. Uh, in some cases, the listening experience is more than adequate to, uh, I'm talking about podcasts, not audiobooks. Mm -hmm. The listening experience is more than adequate to communicate and get their voice out to the world. In other words, it's not necessarily have talking heads like we are today. Uh, but there is a level of engagement that happens with video, and we all understand this. If someone is fine with being captive to a screen and doesn't care about that listener behavioral shift where I'm commuting, I'm driving, where they can't look at a screen, they can consume the content. So to get to the answer to the question, I think that, that we approach it as there's a budget. And ideally, if you could release it both ways, that's a really uh, effective way to do it because then you're serving both types of customer, those that like the screen and want to see the visual to engage and others that want to be multitasking while they're listening and then doing something else. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. It comes down to that budget. So David, as we wrap up today, unfortunately, we have, we're running out of time with you, but what's your best tip for podcasters out there if they want to get into the podcast industry? What have you seen really work and what have you seen just not work at all? Okay, it's a simple answer in the interest of our time, and that is consistency. We tell our podcasters, release every week, minimally if you can, and you can budget for that. And you know, plan your episode, the arc of your season, if you like, so that you're taking your listener and or your viewer on a journey and do it consistently. And that's how you build an audience. Oh, he's a producer at heart. There you yeah. go. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us today on Digital Champions. Great to be with you both. Thank you. All right. And Jonathan, so good to see you as well. And if you'd like to learn more about what they're doing over there at Audivita Studios, you can start by checking them out on dailyadbrief.com. I'm your host, Charlene Shirk. Thanks so much for joining us on Digital Champions. And we look forward to learning something new with you next time. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.